and welcome back to the Real Talking Podcast. Now, unfortunately, it has been a couple of weeks because we've had some technical issues. Uh, we've still had it this morning while we've been messing around with it, but we've finally got it sorted anyway. Uh, so, unfortunately, you have missed two amazing episodes as well. So, episode nine, uh, which was a special for the coronation weekend. Um, we had a lot of fun UK facts and yeah. uh, history stats, a few weird ones. Uh, mm-hmm. There was the monkey hangers, which uh, if I can get the audio fixed for those two, then I will get those published. You might find them at some point in the future, but if not, we'll probably just touch back onto the shit we yeah. were chatting with those. Uh, and number 10 was... Kind of like a summary of the previous 10 episodes. Yeah, it was a it, bit of a special yeah. episode. Uh, your birthday weekend special yeah. kind of as well. We was having a little bit of a drink. Uh, there was some would you rather's on there. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually thought number 10 was probably one of the, the better ones we have done. Which is strange. That's the one. Because that, the would you rather, if we can't get the audio back, we we'll definitely have to come back. To well, that one. I think we will do yeah, some more yeah, yeah. would you rather's again. Because those just weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there was the um, would you rather be completely bald or completely hairy like a gorilla yeah. and that was some controversy from the pair of us because yeah. you'd rather be completely bald yeah i'd be hairy and uh yeah you just didn't agree with me <laughs> i just <laughs> thought quite funny. <laughs> just the maintenance on it just alone would just be mate <laughs> i've got all that maintenance at the moment anyway because i'm so uh i know i've got long hair on the top anyway and i'm trying to grow it out on the back and side so it's all long but my routine now, so when I have my shower, I'll pre-wash the hair to get any general dust out. But so there's a, oh, you mean you just... So you yeah, so all my hair in general, I use, I've got my cheap shampoo that I'll pre-wash to get the dirt out. Then I give it a second pre-wash to make sure all the dirt's out, which it's mad because you do see all the, the, the dust and stuff in the water as it goes down the shower. Then I've got my special hair promotion growth shampoo which goes in all of it and well, including the beard this is at the same time so it goes in all of that leave it in for five minutes while i wash the rest of the body then i wash all that out uh then i put conditioner in mm. which that stays in for a couple of minutes as well and then now <laughs> what i've recently added is the rosemary oil so after my hair's dried to a certain degree I put the rosemary oil in all of it, which that helps promote the grow- growth. Are you using one of those derma rollers as well? No. no. So that's that's with a, another. Uh, is, it Mar- is it Marox oil or something? Yeah, yeah, I think it is Marox oil. Yeah. So if you're using that, it's not because I've got ball patches. I just want to promote the growth, get the, the back and the, the sides longer, quicker. Um, so I put that in, and then it's a different one that you have to use for the beard. Uh, so it's castor oil basically that I've uh, I've always used the beard oils anyway but the castor oil helps grow the beard because I know it's probably hard to remember but before I shaved it all off for the charity a couple of years ago it was actually longer it was touching my chest and it just seems to stay at this length now and I want it longer again I think you should go it off no I'm not shaving it off I'll just trim it I do need just to go like I don't no I mean like so it's just short Nah. So it's not a you wouldn't call it a beard, you call it, you know. No, I, I wanna I wanna keep it longer. I wanna get longer with it. But the main thing, I want all my hair the same length anyway. So yeah, that's that's a full routine with that. So back to the would you rather being hairy, I'm used to it anyway. Mm-hmm. So that wouldn't bother me. Um, and we also touched on uh, favorite comedians and that as well because oh we did then we uh... yeah because we uh, went off. Uh, well, it was the week after we done the record because we tried to be clever, tried to do two records in one sitting. Yeah, to say. Yeah, because so uh, the following week we went and saw Tom Segura live in Birmingham, um, and then you was going away for your birthday. I had stuff to do last weekend, so yeah, tr- trying to yeah. get get ahead and get the records done, but it just didn't work. Bloody technical issues, but sure we've sorted it now. Um, yeah, Tom Segura was good. I was a little 
underwhelmed with it essentially because a lot of his material I already know because of watching him on his podcast and that anyway. But did you enjoy it? I, I mean, enjoyed we it. We didn't really talk about it as no, no, well. We just so did you hear some of the jokes already there? It's not that it wasn't exactly the jokes that he's already told, it's just I knew the stories. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So you yeah, might, so, so as well as hearing them for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew where it was all going. Like I still, I still enjoyed it. You know, it was, yeah. uh, you know, for the price because uh, I think we got thirty something pound each. So you know, it, you know, it was a good experience. And plus, obviously, we made our mate there, didn't we? It was yeah. uh, getting the the cheap beers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skipping the queue, yeah. paying cash, saving money. Well, we saved four pound each point. So. Well, cash is king. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, that, he, he that, made himself he a nice made, little owner. That well, weren't going in the till, mate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was it was a good. Um, yeah. So I think in the next couple of episodes we'll start bringing in some of these uh, would you rather questions and uh, do some of the quizzes and whatnot. Um, yeah, I did like. As I, said, I know I've just mentioned it, but I did like number ten for that quiz. Like that. Yeah. That feel for it. I thought it was a. Uh, it was especially because we had a few beers as well. Before, obviously, went out for food. It yeah. was just, you know, it was good. I know because it was getting quite late by the end, and uh, I mean, it was probably about an hour and ten minutes worth of just rambling on, and uh, we only had to cut it off really because I had to get back home with the wife and so. Um, but it is what it is. It's done. If I can recover the uh, the audio, the the video was just. The video is there. There's just no audio with it because the other microphone just didn't pick up with the camera. It's just fucking. Yeah. It's still a learning curve anyway. You know, we're new to this. We didn't. I say we didn't do well in school. Well, we did okay. Um, but this is all new still. We didn't have podcast lessons in school or anything, did we? You know, no, we, we wasn't lit- taught what we needed to learn. If you if you heard number episode one, it literally just a case of putting it together, sitting down, and just hitting record and yeah. putting it out there obviously you know we're getting better you're getting loads better with the audio uh, sorry with the editing and everything yeah yeah I mean you're it helps really well. that I'm actually using a program that I paid yeah. for instead of just a free one that you could just clip and cut and press play basically but yeah we're getting well, there well I've also obviously cause I never listened to podcasts before doing a podcast which mm-hmm. is weird when you think about it <laughs> But no, since then I have listened to a few podcasts. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I've I've become a fan of of the from doing it. I can uh, understand the effort that goes into them because it's it's, yeah. it's 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 when you have a specific topic, you know, you you kind of keep on the same, you know, topic. Mm. But like as we're doing it, obviously we're trying to you know be different every week. It is, you know, you have to put. A conscious effort into like putting out the right stuff and you know just just chatting shit constantly yeah yeah because we we haven't really got a running theme have we obviously yeah. we did the one episode where it was the, the ghost talk uh, yeah that, that's the personal experiences yeah. and stuff because that's one thing we well we i think we touch on episode well we're calling this episode nine yeah so this is episode nine but version like it's technically episode 11 yeah. but yeah well we touched about like probably getting people on the podcast yeah that's that's the future goal yeah um hopefully we can start getting people on having uh, guests of sorts uh, we're going to sort out the studio in a couple of weeks so you'll see some new scenery you won't see this beautiful radiator beyond us anymore um it is a nice radio it is to be fair, yeah. that or did, did, uh, i know you chose it together yeah. anyway didn't you um, probably i chose it then yeah yeah definitely it was more paint color anyway <laughs> um so yeah once the studio is sorted out then we'll have a bit more room to get a guest in and whatnot uh but yeah uh so i think going forward we'll we'll have other different topics and uh we'll touch on some more different types of uh scenarios like the zombie apocalypse style and that as well um but yeah so going on to it we uh in the week that we have had actually had off I've been busy work wise and uh, you've been on your jollies you've had a nice holiday haven't you yeah so I went to Amsterdam yeah. first time I've been there it was an experience mate yeah yeah it definitely yeah. was um, but yeah I just the one thing that stood out for me was the amount of bicycles it yeah. just the, and 
that no one commutes by car, it just bicycles and trams. It's yeah, it's, uh, I've not been there myself, but he, he, he's the bicycle capital as well, isn't it, really? Everyone, that's their mode of transport, isn't it? Yeah, so I read there was 880,000 bicycles in Amsterdam. That's four times the population. So there's four times bikes there is people there. <laughs> that's crazy, that is, isn't it? Before, would you have three extra bikes? Yeah. Is it because you got three flat tyres on them or something? But when we <laughs> when we was doing a tour, a lady says that they retrieve twelve to sixteen thousand out of the canals every year on top of that. Bloody hell. And we guys like, Whoa, why is there so many in there? And she just said when they're, they're drunk they fall in there. Because <laughs> or they get stolen. But if if you went out and you put your bike somewhere, locked it up, and you went out, you would never find it. And yeah. if you look, if you got absolutely steam and could remember how the fuck you got there, because mm. you, <laughs> they're just fucking everywhere. <laughs> 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 but no, uh, no, it was really good. Um, but I'm gonna tell you about the peep show yeah. that we went to. So if if you have been here, you know what I'm on about. But if you haven't, so you go in, you pay two euro, and I think it lasts for two minutes, and so it's in a circle and then in the middle of the circle where you glass you have a frosty glass you pay two euros the glass and frosts mm -hmm. and then all you can see is like a revolving circle bed and uh so like austin powers style yeah yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> uh to be fair austin powers would have been better than the woman we seen because we saw a barbara she was about a 50 year old from Barnsley, like she uh, looked like someone like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but the most weird thing is, you can see the other people watching it. So are, are you like in the, a? So you're like in a circle. Yeah, but so, where you are, do you walk into like a photo booth sort of? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're in your own little cubicle. Yeah, so yeah. you're on your. So you walk in your own little cubicle. You put the two euros in. You glass on frosts. It's just weird because when we unfrost it, there was a geezer like directly up to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he just looked at us and was smiling, nodding his head. <laughs> he was just like, "What's he doing?" <laughs> so he wasn't nodding his head. No, he was doing. He was doing something, mate. And he, <laughs> so yeah. But we made the mistake of putting four euro, uh, two obviously four euros, two two euros in. So we had it for four minutes, and it was just painfully too long. Just just because <laughs> you wanted to go, but you, you can't open the door in case anyone sees, and because they're proper strict with security yeah. over there. Yeah. And uh, bless her, she took her underwear off, you know, showed us everything she's got. And uh, yeah, it was weird. And then, so anyway, it was that was the, that was like the most serious thing I thought. Mm. We'd done all the sex shows, yeah, which I thought was I, I liked it. it had like um, <laughs> like a <laughs> I don't, don't don't pause when you're saying that you like it because no, some people out there will know what these sex shows are yeah. like, and if it's on the stranger side and they're thinking. You liked this weird thing no. that I've seen before. No, so <laughs> I just liked it because obviously you have people fucking on stage and then yeah. in between that you have like a stripper. But it's kind of like, it's not serious, it's a bit comedic, like they get people up, up, up from you know the audience and take part. And it's, it's got like a comedic factor to it. So similar to that one afternoon in the Legion when I won the raffle thing and got pulled up on the stage by a stripper there. Yeah, but it was more. Yeah, but it had more like of a, a, yeah, a show to it. Like it was yeah, not just they do it every night. And it, so yeah, not yeah. just terrorising there. No, it was a. Uh, it was. It was fun. Like to have everyone come up. Well, mm -hmm. they pick people to come up, and you know, it, it's just funny. It, it's funny, and I think it was sixty euros. But you could stay there all night if you wanted to. Yeah, so it's like it was like sixty pound. Yeah, a club. But and then the, all the other uh, acts are just going on and on all night. But the weird thing is, you see, like the old men on the round, they're coming quickly, jump at the back, and you'll see them like every like two minutes go of, of like row closer, closer. The next thing you you know, they're in the front row, like watch <laughs> it. It's just like fuck you know. But the most serious thing, so in terms of all that, the most serious thing I've seen in there. So where the peep show was, that was in a different venue to where the sex show was. Mm. So you have the um, the peep show in the dome, yeah. And to the right, you had like porn booths. So you watch porn and obviously masturbate. Cause it was, I assume so because there was tissue in there. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. 
just why do you need why do you, like just do that in your house now yeah I don't see why you'd have to go, go out to a booth yeah, to yeah, pay yeah. for it when you can just stay in your hotel mm. room and watch it on your phone or something that is a bit strange it is weird paying, paying to go and have a wank yeah. that's weird like if, I don't, and know, I don't know if you can select your, your fucking type of porn but obviously in yeah. your own house you can just put whatever you want on I suppose it's probably because when people are walking up and down the red light district all day they can't hold it in yeah. long enough to get back to the hotel or but it's not even a door that's blocking it it's like a car in yeah that's it's just, so like it's like <laughs> so the way I walked in to this venue with the peep shows you walk in the uh, peep show dome to your left and then you had like three or four booths to your right where you watch the porn eyes. Uh, there was something at the back. I can't. I, I didn't go to it. I can't remember what it was. Mm. Um, yeah, it, that that was just weird. But so all that's on the on the red light district. And what I found weird about the red light district is, you know, you're walking around. It's busy. It's like the hub. Obviously, you've got cafes, restaurants, just off it. So it is pretty much, you know, prime location. Mm. And uh, you walk past, you see the girls in the windows, which is weird, like, because you can be standing, I don't know, as close to me and you, so two feet away. Yeah, yeah. And there's just a big glass, and they're standing there, and mm-hmm. the pine eggs come in. Now, I don't know who has the balls to knock the window in this crowded area, ask, you know, this is what they want, if they yeah, can offer yeah. it. Then go, yeah, then you see them inside, until I close the curling. Mm. So, and then I, I, I just can't imagine someone having the balls to go in and out while it's that busy. It's, I know that's what it's there for. Yeah, yeah. But like, I've seen someone come out and I just wanted to laugh. Like, it was weird as well because, so the the main red light district is on either side of a, like a canal. Yeah. So, yeah. left and right all the way down. But just off of me, I have like little off like little alleyways with, and they're in there as well mm. and for me I, you, you, you'd you kind of want to go in to like the less busy ones yeah yeah but now this geezer just straight out busy straight out Australian curling's clothes just like I can see you in there <laughs> it's yeah obviously that's what it's there for and it's 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 the different cultures isn't it yeah. you know it's um, it's it's what you know same again with the the caps which are just for the smoking and yeah. eating the cakes and stuff it, it's uh, completely different isn't it but yeah I, I, I think it's because of where we come from it's obviously it's not legal here and it is a bit more taboo to do something mm. like that um, but if you think of it as a different uh, service you know if, if you walk down a road that was full of tattoo shops and you see everyone walking in getting the tattoos and walking back out it's that kind of thing really yeah. isn't it but obviously you're getting a better service unless you're really into tattoos well, um. <laughs> yeah. well, I see, I, what I was meant to say I would have forgot. some of them have like a piece of paper in the window and says couples welcome yeah so you know if you're a couple you can still get it you know we, yeah. it, we went to a, the red light museum mm. as well and it's basically you know it used to be a, I don't know what I don't know if it's called a brothel. I don't know what he, he was. Yeah. So it, it's left the way how it was. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> it's just got a bed of sink, like a be thing. And then just all the loot. Watch the bunny L- L- Literally, yeah. <laughs> Crack back onto it. But, there it is. But so I've heard that it's uh, not just the red light district now as well. That you've got, I think it's uh, an orange district, which is all men in the windows. And then there's like a multicolored one which has got transgenders in the windows and that as well. Yeah, see, I heard before when there's a blue light district which is for lady boys, mm. basically. But I didn't see that. Right. And it's if in the vicinity of that, the area with the red light, red light district is, I didn't see it. It might have been further on down the main route because I didn't go all the way down, possibly, but. Yeah, oh, I didn't see it. I suppose because once you've seen ten windows, you you like all right. There's not much difference now. Yeah. It means that there, there's. <laughs> I would say there's probably about over hundred. Yeah. There. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Well, uh, 
Yeah, so you, you went to the museums. I know you're really into your art, aren't you? Um, <laughs> some nice paintings. <laughs> no, no, I didn't uh, go to either the, to those two top two museums. I know the no. one's the Van Gogh Museum. I can't yeah. remember. I think it's the White Card, but nah, I, I I didn't know. I just we done a lot of tours. We done the Frank house though. Yeah, was, yeah. Which was interesting because I always thought like, how can people hide in a house? And not get caught like obviously she she, she did in the end yeah but how did, how did spoilers they get, oh, yeah <laughs> but how did they get away for so long like hide like door but bookcase they never find us but i understand mm-hmm. why because literally if you've ever been there you'll know it's like a house within a house right. so the house they was living in like secretly it was probably bigger than my house yeah. and it's mad to think it mm-hmm. wasn't like a room it was kitchen bathroom bedroom but it's probably same size as this house, if not a little bit bigger. Yeah, but I, I can't. I'm trying to think of the term for it now. Um, it's I don't think it's really a thing over here. I've, I've only really seen stories of it over in America, where it's people that secretly live in other people's lofts. Um, so there's one in particular. Uh, well, this is an actual thing. Like, yeah, so it's it's called like squirreling or something. So essentially, like, because you're hiding in someone's house, and then when they go out to work, you jump out the loft and you you know use the facilities, you you know have food from the fridge and whatever, and then you go back up into your little hiding hole in the loft or whatever. Um, because I've, I've seen a few videos anyway, but the one in particular, they'd heard noises uh like from the loft and they'd noticed things moved and whatever so they'd set up uh, a camera i think it was in the garage so they must have been mm. living in the, the loft above the garage and uh the chap pretended to drive off as if to go to work and whatever and then you see the loft hatch lift up move to the side and then like this geezer's head just pops down so he's having a look around and then he's got his own little ladder that he's got and he, he pulls it up like drops it down to the floor starts coming down and your man walks through back into his garage he's like fucking get out of the house you dickhead like, so he kicks him out like, so he goes back in grabs his bag and then comes back out the loft and like, just does one lock um oh, God. yeah i can't remember what it's called but it's it's quite common really uh, yeah it's just look how, how can i mean i only know from lots over here from going up and uh, doing work so often with the insulation that it's in the lofts and it's itchy and it's hot you can't breathe and if you're lucky there's a light up there but you know you haven't got power to be charging your phone or anything so if you're up there watching stuff on your phone all, all the time you've only got a couple of hours before it dies mm. so you've got to be well equipped you've got to have battery banks and whatever and if you need the toilet like you can't be like just winging in the corner yeah, yeah. you'd notice a stain coming through on the loft and whatever it's just it, it, i don't know how people do it to be fair and um, what's it called squirrel it's it's something like that that's not actually the word because of was i remember it uh, uh again i've got peacock in here but it's it's not peacocking because that's like <laughs> showing off like trying to pull someone isn't it um oh god that's gonna do me head in now uh but yeah it's, it, it is an actual thing so it's they're literally just hiding other people's houses just living just living yeah, yeah just yeah, obviously for free which um, obviously, I mean, you've been in America a few times as well, haven't you? Yeah, you've seen the uh, homeless situation over there, yeah. so it's understandable why people would do it then. Have you not seen the video recently of uh, I think it was it was over in LA or San Francisco? It was definitely in California, where there's a tent that obviously homeless geezer, but mm-hmm. he's got a projector. He's watching TV on a projector. No, in his I'm tent. That, no, it's good. Tent's fucking massive as well. And like he's just chilling in there watching a big projector in his fucking tent uh, but like <laughs> everyone outside would be able to see what he's watching then as well though wouldn't they well no you could yeah you could you could uh i can't remember what he watched but he, i think he's watching just the news or something at the time yeah yeah but the, the weird thing about san francisco is you can go in there and rob something and unless it's over a certain i think it's two hundred dollars no i think it's it's uh under a thousand dollars no new york new, new york's york. under a thousand dollars so all right so it's like i think san francisco had some great tune so as long as it's two hundred dollars you can't get done for it yeah you just get a warning no no and then please get caught out there's only can give you a warning yeah yeah if you get caught mm. so you you 
you go homeless people just going into like the stores it's like in handful of shit fucking yeah you would be you yeah. can't fucking do it mate. it's uh it is mad because again especially like since they've got the gun laws and that and you've got to have some balls to just walk mm. in and like hope that you're not going to get shot because you're stealing some food from yeah. the shop and that I mean obviously over here people do eat and they go in with knives and whatever and it's I suppose it is easier because the time that it takes the police to come over and like try and stop you arrest you and whatever they're already gone in there so yeah you got to have some balls oh I was, sorry I was on I was shocked the amount of homeless people I did see mm. that it is um there's a few there, it, it, it was weird to the fo- to the point where you go down one street fine you turn like a left and it's just just hundreds of harm like, I mean hundreds of just harmless people and you're like yeah I'm fucking going down there mate. It, it is strange though, isn't it because you again look I've only seen it on the TV but it's like there's just be a whole street where it's just little tents yeah. and uh, shopping trolleys just with all the personal items and it's just full of the homeless people it's it's a strange reality really it's a shame that obviously if, when anyone gets homeless um, everyone's got all the different circumstances uh, it's it's weird that, that just, well they can do something about it not the homeless people I'm on about the governments and that they can do something about it they, they just choose not to really mm. you know it, I've found it interesting for the last couple of years really with uh, not that I go to town centres often now but the amount of shops and everything that are closing due to the likes of Amazon just dominating everything. You know, anything you need, Amazon, eBay, it's all there, Etsy and everything. So with all these empty shops and that on the high streets, um, again, with all the banks that are closing down, as lot individual branches, um, what are they going to do with those? Surely it would just be easy because a lot of the councils own those buildings in the town centres anyway. So surely they could just convert those into hostels of sorts mm. and just move the homeless people in. But they won't, though, because they won't be able to make money off of it, basically. You haven't uh, cost them money to do one, no. Yeah, but as I say, it's just... They could do it, they won't do it because they're not going to earn off of it. Um, which is... It's a shame because there shouldn't be as many homeless people as there is. I get it when it's uh, self-inflicted because you've done gambling and drug addiction and whatever... So you've lost all your money that way. But when you see it's the likes of the, the ex-military people that have lost everything because of PTSD yeah. or whatever, um, and seeing them on the streets, it's it's such a shame. Uh, you know, every now and again, I'll, I won't give them money whenever I see a homeless person. I'll buy them food. So go in the shop, get them a sandwich and a drink and whatever, and give them that way. Because uh, at least then you know they're not going to waste it yeah. on uh, drugs and alcohol. Um I remember the one time when we was living in the pub I was walking from my pub down to another pub with Kiefer and uh, he just jacked the fruit machine so he's got 100 odd pounds in his pocket and it was always the same one outside the co-op next to us anyway and uh, he took the, the chap inside the shop let him just pick up all sorts and he's like do you want one of them? Uh, yeah alright so he's packed, uh, picked up like a six pack of crisps grabbed some sandwiches and uh like some uh, pop and whatever and it came was up do you want a beer he's like uh, no I'll be alright he's like go on have some beer and he's, he's like picked him up some cans of stereo or something and that as well he's spent like 30 quid on him <laughs> and he's still like giving him a tenner or something as well I think he even bought him some tobacco and like rolling yeah, paper yeah. and that and I was like mate you're off your head man like you know fair enough he's living like a king tonight his geyser is all but you know fucking hell you're not helping him by giving him drink and that as well really but you know yeah it's it's nice to pay forwards yeah. not so much I mean as I said that was a bit extreme with the alcohol and that he probably didn't need that but um, yeah it's, it's nice to do it sometimes but obviously some of them they are on the other scale uh, especially when you see the ones that aren't actually homeless they're just the the milk in the system I remember uh, when I used to get the bus uh, I was working on a building site in in the town centre and there was this one couple I'd, I'd seen them for like three four days in a row they'd come up to everyone at the bus stop oh, my, my kids in the hospital and you got 20p for the bus rare rare and look it's the same story every day and how they can think 
that can do it at the same time every day as well. Yeah, the same the people sound that commuters, must, yeah. yeah so, you know, so after like, the first day, everyone was standing to do one then anyway. Uh, yeah, people like that cracks me up. But they can earn a lot of money doing it as well, though, can't they? Yeah. I've seen bloody stories when they're on like bloody 500 odd pound a day, just sitting there, just with a cup in their hand. It's, uh, it's crazy. But you think with how it's all going to change to the digital currency, which I think 2028 that's coming in. Um, so King Charles, he probably won't even get his face on a pound note yet. Um, since it will all be digital currencies, so literally just bank cards. What are these homeless people going to do? Because you're not going to have any change to give to them or anything. And buskers as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose with buskers, they could have like a little pay machine. You could just tap and donate 50p or something. But homeless people ain't going to be able to do yeah. that. Even though I have seen that, where they've had one. But obviously, they're not homeless if they can afford it. Yeah, because you need a home address to so have a bank card. Yeah. So, yeah, them ones are a bit obvious. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, not interesting. It's going to be a. Uh, hard for them they're not going to be able to do anything they're not going to be able to receive any money um, yeah I wonder how that's all going to change in a few years uh, yeah. right off of the uh, darkness a little bit now so, um, yeah so you had a you good holiday uh, obviously you've never been into any drug partaking or anything anyway so no. you, did you have any space cakes or anything no it's there? sort of against the yeah, you know, um, it just felt really bad. Like, cause you walk in, it's like back in the days with the, you know how when you just smoke in the pubs. Yeah, just smoke everywhere. I was like, no. Nah, nah. Oh no, I don't miss those days. Cause I remember we'd go down to the Legion or wherever, and you, yeah, as soon as you walk in, you didn't notice it much at first because it was the norm. So every every room just bit of cloud of smoke. It was all uh, the contestants and stars and they're always coming out of the doorway, and I just, I used to hate it the next day because you oh, wake yeah. up and you close, your bedroom would stink yeah. because your clothes stunk of smoke and you wouldn't be able to wear the same clothes two days in a row anyway, um, even though Barry did, but <laughs> you'd, have to, you'd have to put them straight in the wash. Uh, it was quite, quite surprising when they actually did bring that law in that you couldn't smoke in song mm. and what a difference it made. You know, I remember pretty much one of the first nights getting up in the morning and then just still smelling my aftershave on my t-shirt and not like a yeah. cloud of smoke and that dog stinking like an ashtray it was a uh, it, it definitely definitely better because even with the vapes I know some places aren't as strict about it but you know look, not being able to puff on them inside I think that makes a difference as well um, even though I know it's different worldwide you, you've still got countries that are allowed to the smoking inside mm. uh, then there's some places where they have like a separate smoking area and all that as well. Um, yeah, but it's uh, it's definitely definitely for the better over here anyway. Yeah. I can't stand it. It's horrible. It is strange. It's going sorry. No, sorry. I was going to say because even when we left the concert last week, it was literally as soon as we walked outside, everyone's just lighting yeah, up yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just oh god, fell off gagging at one point. <laughs> it was a uh, yeah, it's, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. I was just going to say how, how strange it is when you go to look obviously when you are a tourist in other countries and how they work look we just touched on the homeless in America obviously here as well mm. but it's just weird how you know you can go to some countries and still smoke you know in some buildings or yeah, side yeah. rooms or whatever but it's just yeah it's just but I know that's I suppose it's good in a sense that's the main thing of those caps and that in Amsterdam isn't it it's because that's a controlled environment to uh, smoke the weed and have your mm. cakes and uh, what, the mushrooms and whatever uh, because you're not allowed to just smoke it while you're out walking around are you yeah. it has to be inside yeah. or in there yeah, in designated areas because yeah. Yeah, um, again it's only from what I've seen uh, there's, there's numerous different products that, uh, there's one which looked like a, a bag of candy floss but it's just full of like, the, the smoke as if it's like a bong but in a bag and so you, they just sit there and just inhale a little bit here and there um, yeah I mean maybe that's something we can do with a future episode a special or something get some mushrooms which mushrooms is a mad one because 
they, they grow naturally. It's mushroom season. Like you can find them special areas, like in the woods and whatever. Like, but you can literally just see them while you're walking around. But as soon as you pick it up, that's illegal. It's 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 weird. Like, it's it's I mean, again. I know weed. It's technically a, a legal. Uh, it's a natural product because it grows itself from the even from the earth, or if you put it in the pot yourself, or but you know that's that's illegal. Um, but yeah, as soon as you pick up a mushroom, illegal, weird. Mm. Um, which is strange as well because I don't know. I say I don't know why. It, the way it's um, medically proven and medically available in most, if not all, of America now. I think Canada as well. Yeah, I think legal. it varies on the style. Yeah. Um, so essentially, you just have a medical card and go into whatever shop that uh, provides it, and you just show your card and then they give it to you yeah. don't they and I don't know what state it was now but th there's a few of them anyway but once they started doing that and it's uh, all controlled and provided through the governments uh, crime rates went down because they're not wasting time just picking up little drug dealers because there's no need for them, yeah. them drug dealers anyway now and it's like research levels went up uh, profits towards the state governments and whatever all these things went up and so all that information is available yet we still won't make it legal I'm not saying it because I've, I haven't smoked weed for, for the years now to be fair um, not that I used to smoke a lot anyway but uh, it was I think it's uh, what was it Theresa May who yeah. was the Prime Minister for a little while her husband is like the biggest like worldwide uh, provider for CBD oil. So essentially, whatever farm unit or something that he's got over here grows a load of weed, extracts the oil, and sells it worldwide. So you think, oh yeah, it's all right for them to be able to grow it and do whatever they need to because it suits them. But then they won't provide like sort out the service yeah. for everyone else. So the, that's just the rich keeping themselves rich again, isn't it? You know. Uh, there's plenty that Rishi Sunak doing as well um, but it's nice to see that Trump's going to be back in power soon <laughs> that'd be funny uh, I saw the interview uh, that he did the other week again I've only seen clips of it but he gets asked the question um, well in t typical Trump style he's, he gets asked the question to, to do with something which uh, it was basically along the lines of how much money has already been sent over to Ukraine to help mm. with the war and would you still continue to give that money and so he, he skirts around it a little bit and then because he keeps getting asked about it no you're not answering the question you're not answering it he just goes look when I'm president again look it will be over in a day because I'm good <laughs> friends with Putin and uh, the other one and that um, so no, that's good that. yeah that's it so because I'm friends with them I'll just sit them down and then tell them to stop being knuckleheads basically and like it will be over in a day like we'll all be shaking hands and having a steak meal or whatever he comes out with and he's just he's just gold in it he's yeah. just so funny like uh, even his his campaign it's just slagging off Biden and that <laughs> it's, like, there's videos of like Biden's going up the steps into a plane and he falls up the stairs and uh, there's one where he's struggling to put his coat on and this and that and <laughs> Trump's still doing his usual tweets, just laughing at him and everything. But the whole campaign is like, Biden's done this. We'll do this better. We'll do it this way. And you just have to laugh. And uh, to be honest, I, obviously, I don't follow politics much anyway. But the other chap who's running, he, he's uh, trying to do it against Trump. But he's also slagging off Biden as well. So it doesn't seem like they're actually promoting what they want to do too much. Yeah. They're just saying... Biden's not done anything. He's not gonna do anything. Let's get him out. Yeah. Let's get me in log. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens over there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's just mad. Any America's just mad in general. Um, shout out to our American fans. Uh, we do appreciate you. Uh, speaking of which, you know, we, we do know that some of you out there are in America, uh, Washington, and um, without looking at the stats, but you're there. Uh, so. Send us any questions in on that. You know, you, we want to know what you 
think about our views on your country. Um, and yeah, if you've got any topics or anything you want us to talk about, just think it over. We open ears, we want to hear what you have to say. Uh, so have you got anything else you want to say about old Amsterdam? No, 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 not really. I think we touched on all the aspects. I mean, just everything that I thought was weird and... Wonderful. Yeah, weird and wonderful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so while you was on your job, he was always having a, a long week at work, just grafting as always, as I do. Um, but uh, one of the days, well, the nights after I'd eaten, wasn't really paying attention to the TV, but just finished my food. And then as I was about to go up to bed, uh, I'd noticed the program on the TV, so uh, it was called DNA Family Secrets, and it was this old chap. Uh, I'd say he was in his eighties. I didn't, I say I didn't see the backstory up leading to it, but uh, so he didn't know anything about his family history, was what mm-hmm. I gathered. So it was essentially like that uh, DNA test. Uh, name of that now but where it tells you your heritage oh, yeah. so, ancestry yeah so it'll tell you if you're like you, you're Scottish and yeah. like Spanish and whatever so they've done that uh, and they've the, the lady sitting there she's like right so uh, we've picked up names of I'm guessing it was adopted as well because they were coming out with different surnames mm. and uh, so they were saying uh, this name that name blah blah so uh, going off of that it's 91% certain that your grandfather wasn't a Nazi and he looked so disappointed like he, he I thought he was going to cry but obviously he didn't mean it in that way but to me he just looked like he was disappointed that he wasn't a Nazi <laughs> and uh, so his family was Jewish from what she, she was getting at basically off but it was just it really looked like he was disappointed and he didn't say anything about it um, and then he, his wife come on to there and uh, they were explaining on where his family come from they were doing like they had the map that it was from here and there and different parts and that lot. but I thought it was quite interesting it was at the end of the show and plus I was going to bed anyway so I, I think that's a, a program that I might watch a little bit more of to be fair but it was just his initial reaction I thought it was so funny because he did just look devastated as if he wanted to be a Nazi, but he wasn't. But I don't know why you would want to be one these days. Uh, I'm sure it was good back in the day when Hitler was around, uh, if that's what you wanted to be a part of, dog. Um, was he German then? So from what I gathered, he didn't know what he was, uh, uh, which I suppose that's the whole premise I'm of the I'm wondering why she was saying you weren't a Nazi. I, I don't know, he might, he might have got told that his family was from... Uh, yeah, it might have from been... That. It might have been uh, maybe the adoption papers where yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Um, if he was, uh, I can't think of the name of the, the homes for him now, but where did the, the, the kids, camps? Yeah, where the kids get adopted from. Um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so like, from one of them places, it might have been whatever documents they had from there because they didn't have parent details right. that maybe the thought yeah. he was either so I thought it was just a weird thing to say when she's like you're not a, you're, you know your yeah. family didn't come from like Nazis or whatever yeah. that's just a weird but yeah obviously you, you only put that segment so yeah. it was just so weird I, I probably should have went back and rewatched the episode or something or, but yeah it was, it was literally just looked devastating but I mean to be fair once that says that he was like whatever percentage uh, like Jewish family and that he did have that stereotypical big nose. So mm. once it says that, I was all oh, kind of a bit obvious, Lord. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought that was quite a, a funny little moment the other night. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I've not watched much TV this week, to be fair. It literally has been uh, out early, getting back, doing the usual walking the dog and that. Um, oh, God, which he had his moment again the other day. He ate uh, Amazon packet. Luckily, he didn't eat the blue tack that was inside because what came out of him was bad enough as it was. So I wouldn't have been able to handle it if it was blue coming out of him as well. Jesus, man. He's off his head, that dog is. Um, <laughs> but again, even with walking him earlier, the, this little chihuahua going out, 
like trying to attack him and the, the lady can't even hold the lead back properly and it's a chihuahua and she's struggling to hold it I'm like you need to sort your dog out back like, yeah. you know it's, it's not right mine's there like just all excited just to be out of the house and that like and yours is ready to like draw blood it's just not right man so like, oh he's only like it with me I'm like no I see that dog all the time in your window it's always aggressive like you know mm. give it a chill pill or something man um, but, uh, yeah so no TV or anything I've not really done any prep for this to be fair it's just it's been hard getting it all sorted hasn't it yeah as I was say it's been um, a lot of tech we, obviously it's took us back we, like, we've spent over two hours messing around just trying really, to get it sorted so uh, yeah but we got there yeah. we're here. And hopefully from now on we're back to usual every yeah, week we, weekly weekly uh, posts um, but one thing that I have been meaning to say for a, a, a while, to be fair, look. Um, so you look a little bit of an uh, an accumulator, an acrobat from time to time, don't you? Yeah, every um, now and again. I'll do it every now and again as well. I'm not really much of a gambler, but I think this is something that we should do. So just on the. Uh, basic betting I'll put it as roulette basically red or your black so you've got a 50-50 chance you're 16 bets away from being a millionaire oh so, if you get it the right constant then 16 yeah. times so if I remember it rightly if you start off with £100 so you're constantly doubling it doubling yeah, it doubling yeah, it yeah yeah so I think it's something but that you'd get to like about a couple of grand you'd be like fuck I but that's, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the moral thing but I think I think you just got to go for it really ain't you you could put it that's one gone <laughs> that's, that's the risk yeah. though isn't it yeah, well I think if you, if you could turn 100 quid into like as soon as you start like 30 grand you, you just walk away there's yeah. no way you would risk 30 grand but then I'd just half it again like no, I, could, I know what you're saying but then it's it, I don't know am I in the moment, any I suppose. Yeah, it's in the moment. But, uh, I, I think it'd be a funny one to do one day if we could just sit here. Yeah, I don't think you can record it though. But you mean like do it on the laptop? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so not actually put it yeah. uh, on screen, but look, record our reactions while we're doing it. That would be an interesting episode. Yeah. Because it could be two minutes long. It could be a fucking hour long, couldn't yeah. it? Um, <laughs> and just watching the live. A short episode. Yeah, yeah. On a really long one. On a. Uh, but yeah, that 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 would be a raw emotions coming out. Because could you imagine it, Rick? Really? Because I think the final figure is like a million, uh, like one point three million, something like yeah. that, with the way it works out. I should have had all the maths ready for it, really, but never mind. Um, so yeah, could you imagine you're at like six hundred odd thousand, and you you're on your sixteenth spin now, and we've put it all on red. No, you did. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I think it'd be worth it though. No, no, no. I, I don't. If if some if someone sets you to six hundred grand in our cash, or you can double it or lose it, you just take it. You can buy. You can do everything you want. Buy a house. Buy a dream car. Holiday. Have money in the bank. You never have to worry. I just wouldn't. But then you could do all that twice. Then you could do it all twice. You could do it all <laughs> like zero times. Yeah. How much? You'd be more good. If you ended up walking away with nothing, yeah, but because you had it. But if we if we did it between a pair of us, you think we're only fifty pound down there? I think you know what would happen. No, 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 you can't, you can't think that way because no, but, but that's that's the really side you know, of it though. You know what we'd have to do? You'd have to do one. I'd have to do one. So a hundred quid for you, hundred quid for me. So that why, because I know if I got to about a couple of grand, I'll take that. I'd be like, fuck, I ain't carrying this on. I'll 50 quid. I, I know I'd, I'd like to give you the big balls and just keep going. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. So, let, let's get it on now then. So, we were starting on 100. Mm. So, obviously... Your first one 200. is up to 200. So 
for him. 200, we're still going for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and it, it's until you start hitting the thousands. Yeah, so number three, 400, still going for it easy. You know, it's it's just fucking. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know it might sound uh, a bit cocky to some people. £400 isn't a lot of money. To some people, it is a no, lot yeah. of money. No, yeah, in terms of what, you, what, what we was aiming, look, the whole point of this. Yeah, so. Yeah, number three is eight, and then number four. This is when we're into see, four figures. See, so see, we're now, sixteen hundred now. Now here's what I'll be thinking. Do I just take this, and then just fucking call it a day? Because I've turned fifty quid into that. Yeah, but then, so again, sixteen hundred. I'm still thinking like, no, nah, no, nah, I want more. So, oh no, I've done yeah, it wrong there. Time to uh, so, so it'd be it, 3,200. It's, it's 3,200. Yeah. Uh, See, if it, there's no way, there's no way you have 100 quid and you've turned into 3,200 and you're carrying on. I, I still feel like I would at this point, Rav. <sighs> yeah. See, so you've definitely already stopped with this. I, point, I think, you? I think, if, if there's 3,200, I'm, I'm taking it off 100 quid. I think that's where I, if I've got it and it's on, on my balance, I, I, I probably would walk away there. See, so this is what we would have to do it separately. Yeah, yeah that's so what you, I'm saying. So Cause... we'd have to do the same, like red or black then. So you'd still know, if I carry on, you'd still know or we do how opposites. much you would have lost when I carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, this, yeah. yeah, we can't do opposites. Yeah. Maybe that, that could be a, a, a separate Because one, one would go straight away, yeah. isn't it, I suppose? And so, also, what if what we doing is are we throwing like a couple of quid on green constantly just in case, or is it just no? Because it has to be. Yeah. Well, it, obviously, it if, be, it's zero, this, if it's zero, if it's zero anyway, it's you've lost as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. With this way, it's literally just a heads or tails, a red or black. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going on. I've got the six. Here's four, where right. it starts with yeah. starting like really good numbers. So six thousand four hundred. Then we're on to 12 eight. 12 eight. I'm, I'm still going. I know. You think, so if, if you're 12, 12 eyes and 100 on if your I've balance. If I've already got to this point, I'm like, I'm on a roll. I am. But you could be like, I could take this money and just do it like, yeah. off 100 quid. Like, you'll never, well, you'll say you'll never get that kind of money again off 100 quid. But I think, realistically, if I got to 12, I might be take the ten and play the two two A. You know, yeah. like start to be logical about it. Like, like yeah. so you don't lose it all. Then I suppose when you start getting like anything over ten grand, you you probably when you start getting that, I think you'd you'd have to take the ten, play the two A. Because right. yeah, so I'm just you, I'm just but yeah, make a note of your two A because we'll work that out afterwards then. But I'm I'm still going, and then. The next one, twenty five thousand six hundred. Now that that started to twist me a little bit there because I'm, so, I'm yeah, saying yeah. twenty four grand. And then so the next one's going to be obviously over fifty. Yeah. So. So that's this is where it starts. Yeah. Th- oh. every, every one of these now. Yeah. This is where you, you definitely yeah. thinking, oh god, that is that's life changing. So how many wins is that in a row? That is uh, is that six in a row to get to there? Uh, is it six? Maybe. Sorry. Troll, because I messed up, didn't I? So let me. Uh, I thought it was. So one, two, two, three, oh, four, five, six, seven. I was I won it. I, eight. So that's eight, eight wind spins. Eight, eight is twenty five grand six hundred, and then nine, nine. is fifty one thousand. So ten. You only need to get ten right for hundred grand. Yeah. But then, so ten, you're on one hundred and two thousand four hundred. Yeah. Oh. So just just imagine. I think if we if we did this, we'd have to have a couple of bevs. Because nerves are... Yeah, you want to be logical about it all the time, and rather than just... 
Yeah, but I mean, if you've had a couple of drinks, the, the nerves aren't going to be there as no. much. You're going to be like big yeah. ball in it. I, I'm no, I mean, big ball, yeah, maybe I'd probably spin more than what I said, which was the, the 3,200 or whatever. But yeah. When you started into the fifty grand, one hundred and two, it's it's the point where you'd have to see and be like, we've had a few beers, a hundred quid, we've done it. Like, let's just call it an hour. But I'd still go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if I've got to this point, I'm going again. <laughs> I'm going again. Because I'm but, I'm but, after that two hundred four thousand eight hundred. Just just imagine that you had a hundred and two, and then you lost it. Yeah. You'd be like, you'd be like. Yeah, you know, I only put fifty quid on whatever, but I'm I'm telling you now. I oh, know that you'd think about that for the rest of your life. You'd think about it more losing a hundred grand than it than playing that playing on. <laughs> I think so. I think you'd care more about losing a hundred grand than playing on from a hundred grand. Yeah, but the rewards greater than the risk. So we're on two hundred and four thousand eight hundred at the moment then. And then we're on, it goes up to 409,600. So then again, after that, it's... So, right there, so if you actually got up to 400, 409,000, you wouldn't play it hard, like... Oh, no, I've, I've, yeah, I think I, at I, this point, I've definitely already cashed in. But I, I think for me, if we ever if we was to do this and we ever got anywhere near a hundred grand I'd, I'd have to like get me out I couldn't I couldn't play no more that that would that would be my see so again I think we'd go we'd back have there. to do if set, we got yeah. to the hundred and two thousand I think that's where we split it in half so we've got 25 each and then we carry on with the, the other 51 yeah, thousand yeah. but that's an extra step you gotta you gotta try and beat the odds already to get 16 in a row now you've got to get 17. And, uh, so we're at 409,000 there. Uh, 819,200. And so then, the last one after that then, 1.638 million. Mm. So, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of wind spins to win in a row. I don't think you're ever going to do this no, because I'm you're emotionally already all over the place. But you and we're just hypothetically. <laughs> but you think about it to get 19 heads or tails, cause technically what it is in a row. Yeah, 16. Correct. I mean, 16 to get to that point, yeah. You know, it's just. I don't, I don't think it's. No, it's. it's I would be good. Imagine what was the one before? Sorry, eight hundred grand. Yeah, eight hundred nine. Imagine, 000. imagine having eight hundred grand and losing that. No, no, no. I couldn't sleep. I think we're gonna have to do it. We'll, we'll have to do it separate. Because I, I, I'm. But how good would you be if I bang that out? Because I know if you if you bang that out, I know you give me some. So I'll be fucking. So. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to write a contract up and say that we don't do that. But nah, fuck you. Obviously, you know, I'll square you up, Benny. Do you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> I, I, I think realistic to Joe, Joe, when you start hitting a hundred grand, that's when you, I think even you would have to be like, it's a hundred grand, a fifty quid. It's, mm, there's a lot you can do a hundred grand. Like life change, not so. It's not life change. It, no, it, 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 it is. It is. But it's, it's life change. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The million quid is definitely life change because you, yeah. you, you have no worries whatsoever. Then, but yeah, that that hundred grand, I think, is where if I was to risk it to that, that that would be like I ain't losing a hundred grand on a spin. <laughs> I'm on spin. Right. Well, I think that's definitely something we're gonna have to do. Yeah, we should definitely future. have to sell it off, yeah. Yeah. What if we both just lose one or two <laughs> So But yeah, I think if that happened, like if, if we don't if we lost pretty much straight away, then we'd have to do it again after a couple of weeks. So Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be a funny one, yeah. I reckon. Um yeah, so I think we've done well, considering we didn't really mm, have any prep for this week. Um Hopefully I'll have more time now to get back into it. Uh, 
get some topics actually just spend half an hour looking on my phone watching whatever crappy videos to get some more topics back in in mind um but anyway uh yeah so we'll call that a pod it's a pod. Uh, don't forget to uh, like subscribe all that jazz send in uh, any emails to us at realtalkingpod at gmail.com uh, the twitter it did change from the original one so it's ash and jd uh, oh, again when I get round to it I will sort out an instagram or whatever uh, just don't have enough hours in the days or days in the weeks um, so yeah hope you enjoyed don't forget to share as well and uh, we'll see you next week then <laughs>